You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. This is 95.6 BRFM, our very own community radio station. I'm Daniel, this is the Monday Night Community Show. And now it's time to hear the selection of interviews I did when I was out and about at the Sheffield Cultural Society's allotment plots. I caught up with Dave Howe, our regular visitor, and some of the plot holders as well. This is what happened when I was down there. My name's Dave Gaze. Um, got four plots down the Medway Road site and uh, two beehives. So how are things going for you this year? It's been a weird year. Um, the weather has not helped some things have come too fast some things have come too slowly um the ground dried out so quick in the spring after being flooded because it's heavy clay down here um that it has yields aren't what they could be put it that way but then again we haven't had so many slugs so the potatoes are coming up nice and clean um the sweet corn's only about four foot high when it should be about seven but still getting good cobs off it um, the stuff in the greenhouse started picking melons last week. Chili peppers a couple of weeks ago. Um, guavas and papayas—they're coming slowly. So has this recent rain helped things with it being so dry? It's helped, but it's it's a bit late really um, because it, it, the season's coming to an end um, for the main cropping. So we really wanted it some back in sort of like end of May June time. So obviously, down here we've been able to. We've got hose pipes everywhere, so we've been able to water. So you said you've got um, beehives. You said you've got two. How's that going? Well, it's, it's my first year keeping bees, along with Tom, the site manager. Um, so we've only really had the, we've only had the bees here since June, but uh, we've done the basic course. Now we've got bees. We're starting to learn, <laughs> and there is an awful lot to learn about them. They're fa- they're fascinating creatures. Um, they're, they're okay. It's you know, it's a, it's a steep learning curve, um, but so it goes. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. No problem at all. So, firstly, if the both of you could introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Julia Upward, and I'm Gillian Forbes. So, uh, do you run a plot together? We do. We've been doing it for about the last three years, and um, we uh, came second for two years in the horticultural show. And this year we come second again, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, I know. So three years running, we've come second, <laughs> which is fine. We don't, we don't really mind, do we? So, what are you sort of judged on, or do you enter particular things? No, I think it's judged on lots of things. Obviously, the variety that you have, and the tidiness of the plot, and mm-hmm. how it's laid out, the first appearance. I was going to say, you've got lovely uh, like little grass paths and you're mowing them at the moment. Yes, yes. Uh, some areas we've got bits of carpet because I haven't got around to actually laying them out properly because um, the ground's very difficult down here. It's very hard, very clay mm. soil, although you, we tried to dig it, you know, and we also <laughs> bought a, a rotavator, but it just wouldn't touch it. So I just can't get... It's, it's, it's clay, isn't it? Yes. It's just clay. It's very difficult to, to work this ground. And I assume it's been made harder with the dry weather, although we've had some rain recently. Well, we just can't dig it, basically. Just can't get the fork in it, can no, we? No, no. No, it's a bit better this morning because um, we've had some rain, but generally it's quite difficult to work this, this area. Mm. So what have you been growing this year? Well, a bit of everything, really. We've got cabbages and tomatoes and leeks... Courgettes, um, celery, lettuce, French beans, mm. runner beans, uh, butternut squash, yeah. dumpling squash, marrows, yellow courgettes, green courgettes, Brussels sprouts, carrots we've got in. What, you've got baby sweet corn? Yeah. Raspberries. Yeah, Not got... very successful with the strawberries this year, but um, no. we're going to... Um, 
renew those next year. Yeah, put some new plants in next year. And lots of lettuces because uh, oh. I've got a couple of tortoises so they each eat me out of house and home. <laughs> so, so we grow lettuces for the tortoise. We do. It saves <laughs> me a lot of money. <laughs> Is there anything yeah. doing particularly well at the moment? Well, we've had a, a terrific amount of runner beans this year, Ooh. but um, I do uh, dig a trench and put shredded newspaper in the bottom and uh, compost and manure. Mm. I do that every year, so uh, yeah. I think that's why they've done so well. Yeah. Um, cabbages have been very good. We've had some nice cabbages, haven't we? Yeah, the greyhound cabbages come along lovely. Yeah. yeah, we're just putting a few more in there for winter cabbages, so... Yeah. Oh, and this year yeah. we decided to grow some, some dahlias. We grew them from seed. Mm. Now, I think we put them a bit close together, but they've got some lovely flowers on them. Yeah. Only big disappointment was our um, potatoes. Yes. <laughs> I think the slugs had more of our potatoes than we did. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult to mound the soil up because it's so dry, so mm -hmm. next year we think we'll, we'll grow them in the potato bags. Yeah, I think so. That's our plan anyway. <laughs> well thank you very much and we are continuing here at the monday night community show to hear that selection of interviews i did when i was out and about at the chevy water cultural society's allotment plot and dave Howe joins our next allotment here as we continue to catch up with what's happening down on the plots jim waters medway road allotment so how have things been going this year on the plot some things very good other things not so good again a usual year you get that imbalance i mean i put uh, my raspberries in last year haven't had a raspberry off them that's funny that our ones at home haven't done that well this year very dry yeah so you get tiny little raspberries that are bitter so you just don't bother um plagued with black fly on the runner beans but we had a plague of ladybirds which cured it for us. Right. So that was excellent. Um, good crop of spuds. As you can see the courgettes and things like that are all uh, coming along very nicely. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, sort of creeping right along. Oh yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll cover that given half the chance. And there's sort of, uh, certain things have done brilliantly well other things haven't i mean carrots i'm doing well potatoes i've got a good crop um swede and beetroot all coming up nicely and so if you have a look down here i think marrows and things aren't doing too badly at all no, 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 i think good. that one might even go in the show right yeah um outdoor cucumbers thousands of these so the dry weather hasn't affected these well obviously i've watered and fed these right um sweet corn excellent this year every everything okay but just certain plants and you think that no, i'm not going to do well this year it's just the way it is yeah I noticed you've got a lot of sunflowers growing. I assume they've been doing well. Are they sort of just uh, something extra to help break up the soil? No, no. It, it's uh, where I took a load of soil out from home right. to replace it. I brought it down because it's much obviously finer than this heavy clay. So I put it on and then I noticed there's sunflowers growing everywhere. Right. So I actually dug them up and replanted along the fence. And that's why I've got my sunflower fence. They still look like they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that was it was just something. Where did oh yeah, they came from the garden. Oh, I'll put them along the fence, like the ones up the top. I mean, I planted them on purpose, um, purely for the bees, etc. And, and that was it, really. It was just a bit of show, a bit of colour. Oh, I've got broccoli. Now there's something. Can you see that in there? Calabrese. Oh yes, I can, yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't even realise I had that. That might have to go home for dinner today. <laughs> it looks like it's doing well in there. Yeah. Is the netting to stop sort of things getting into them? Cabbage white butterflies. They lay they love brassicas, so they lay their eggs on the brassicas and then they eat all your leaves and mess your crop up big time. So that's why everybody's got all these sort of makeshift cages and stuff 
What do you reckon? Would it be worth putting in the show? Which one, Jim? The, the, uh, oh, the big one. Oh, the, 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 the green the, one. The courgette that has gone wrong. Absolutely. You know, Daniel, our show is coming up uh, yep. in a couple of weeks' time, actually. So, yes, the courgette that went wrong. Oh, yes. A lot of people have courgettes that go wrong. The thing about courgettes, and there are lots of books about courgettes, actually, 101 ways to actually cook courgettes. courgettes. You'd be surprised what the recipes will get up. Um, and people, because they tend not to pick them on a daily, daily oh, yeah, basis, which is what you, you actually do. You end up with that. You end up with what's uh, technically yeah. a marrow. Uh, so, uh, I'm told, I've never done it myself, you can actually make marrow rum. Yes, you can. The only th thing is, Tricia will not allow me any of her tights to put the marrow in to hang it up. And Jim, you're talking to a teetotaler. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you can. The Germans make a lot of um, marrow rum, actually. Yeah. But uh, it, th there is a technique to it. Right. Well, you, sort of, you cut the top off, scoop all the centre out, and I think it's brown or demerara sugar, and then you just hang it up. It seeps through. And once it starts to get very soft, you make a little hole in the bottom and it just drips out. But it's one of the crops which is becoming more and more popular. Squashes certainly are becoming more popular because literally it's one pot cooking. Uh, my wife grows winter squash where you just cut the top off, scoop out the seeds and you can fill that with cheeses, yeah. meats, all kinds mm -hmm. of weird. And the, you, it doesn't need to see a plate. You just sit there after having baked it for about 40 minutes, Daniel. So oh. that, that's one of the things which has actually been taking off over the last few years. Yeah. It, it, in effect, it's not so much a superfood, but squashes have been discovered over the last few yeah. years, Jim, you would agree. Yeah, yes. And it obviously comes with its own dish. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. You, you, there, there's no washing up. You no just, washing up. You just throw the dish away when you finish. So. <laughs> one of the advantages <laughs> of, of squashes. Of lazy gardening and lazy cooking. Grow your own dish with food already in it. <laughs> so, so, yep, that's one of the things which is, yeah. you know, has now become very popular. But uh, as you look around, Daniel, you can see that, again, like Richmond Street, the yeah. other site that we actually run, there, there's a good, on a, a wide range of vegetables that people are actually doing. Yeah. And introducing flowers as well, because that attracts the bees. And that's beneficial to absolutely everybody, round and about. The fact that uh, they will pollinate just not where they yeah. are, but they will fly two or three kilometres oh, away. Right. And uh, they will pollinate lots of lots of different things. As you can see from the... Um, the uh Sunflowers? Yeah, we've all. They actually came. I was saying to Daniel, I took part of my boulder out at home, right. brought it down because it's nice, fine soil, yeah. and they started to grow. So I thought, well, I can't waste them. So I've just run them along the fence line. The other good thing about them is it's feeding birds yes. as well. Yeah. Feeding birds for free. Plus the fact that you can eat sunflower seeds as well. So yeah. There's something of a, a delicate delicacy so, yeah. uh, well, something I've actually eaten myself. you can actually see on the sunflowers that have lost their petals half yep. the seeds gone yeah because you'll get all different sorts of finches oh, and okay. sparrows yeah that will come and actually feed off them so it's well worth leaving because you tend to think all the flowers finished I'll cut them off but actually no no I, you actually leave them because it is a source of yeah food I mean I've seen all different sorts of finches down here they're also an architectural plant. They, they, mm. they look interesting as well. If you're growing sunflowers yeah. in a garden, they are architecturally great through the winter. It's as though you've got yeah. some height, whereas normally you would cut everything back come autumn time yeah. or late autumn time. If you leave certain sunflowers, and there was something else as well I've, I noticed over here, Verbena banariensis, which is att attractive to bees, also attractive to to butterflies right. but looks very very artistic, artistic. and um, architectural excuse me. architectural during the winter so leave things as I've said to you on your program before actually yeah. you know, leave things let just see what they're gonna look like during the winter they can go through the winter and you've got something interesting to look at when everything else is brown and decayed yeah, unfortunately the big winds got them a few weeks ago that's uh, globe artichoke Oh, all right. It looks like a big thistle, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's got that beautiful dark blue top on it. Bees love it. And I mean, it was over by the side of the shed there and it was taller than I am. And that round. Yeah. And I grow it not 
to eat it purely because it's such a beautiful looking plant. Yeah. It is such a bee attractant actually. Yeah. And it, as you say, again, it looks very architectural yeah. throughout the uh, throughout the winter. I mean, leave stuff around. I know people who actually take the right one, spray them, Christmas decorations, all sorts yeah. of things. So it's not just teasels on the roadside. No. There are lots and lots of other yeah, bits I, and pieces that people use for for sort of thing. Great, you don't have to go and buy holly. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you've got it's all, all your decorations. And again, the birds will be in amongst it, eat no seed. So you'll again get all different sorts of finches and sparrows and everything else that likes any seed eater will be in amongst it. It's just one of the things, actually, Jim has just mentioned this to me and to yourself. Yeah. No matter how old we get and how long in the tooth as allotmenteers we actually are, we're always prepared to try something new. In fact, unfortunately, he passed away some years ago. The guy who used to have the plot next to mine on Richmond Street right. once stood behind my wife and said, and now what the heck are you newcomers growing? And Jim's just described one of the um, the plants he's growing here called brew flower. Brew flower, right? That's the... the, the, the sort of name they've given it um, but it, if, if you look in your seed catalogues in fact it's in our seed catalogue over there um, and it is a cross between curly kale and Brussels sprout so something new for this year for next year and we'll see how it actually goes so yeah. they'll, they'll come up with something new next year as well and yeah. like all fools we will fall for it yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I tried, but nothing has come of them. Again, in the catalogue, there's a thing called a hyacinth bean. And a lab lab bean. And I've got the plants in there, but nothing. <laughs> Just, I am climbing up the stick. What else do you expect me to do? You're supposed to get out of that lab lab, you're supposed to get yard long French beans. Right. We have nothing. <laughs> we have absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's not all successful all of the time, Daniel. <laughs> Jim, thanks very much. No problem. Well, thank you very much. Jim, thank you very much. That's very kind. This is the Monday Night Community Show here at our very own community radio station here on the Isle of Sheppey 95.6 BRFM and we are at the moment continuing to hear that selection of interviews I did when I was out and about at the Sheppey Horticultural Society's allotment plots. My name's Jeff and um, fairly successful with tomatoes as you can see here. Also potatoes, runner beans, all the usual stuff. But it's always very, very difficult. It's very heavy clay soil. When it's uh, winter time, it just floods and water doesn't run away. Then you get spring and then you can't get onto it because it's so soggy still, you get covered in mud. And then when you can get on it, it's baked hard by the sun. It's very, very difficult to get stuff moving. But we do have rotavators and it does, after a time, it does tend to soften the soil. But it's extremely hard work. The weeds grow everywhere, which is the only crop that really doesn't need any attention. <laughs> Always so, away. Yeah, absolutely. But as you can see, I mean, it's a big area. Most people have raised, well, not everybody, they have a few raised beds, but um, but it's very, it's good down here. It's, it's open. And um, as I say, you can see for yourself what it's like. What well, do you prefer, raised beds or just stand? Well... Raised beds have got a place, yeah, because you you've got a smaller area where you can control the soil. You know you can introduce soil and you can keep it moving. But even so, because it's clay, the clay tends to still sort of go into it anyway, and yeah. it's still quite difficult to turn over. And also, the soil during the summer months it just cracks open. Yeah, big cracks, deep, go down maybe twelve inches. And, and then, of course, then the winter rains come, yeah. fills it up, and it doesn't run away. It just stays there and grows the, and makes it harder. Well, the tomatoes there look like they're doing uh, very well. The tomatoes do extremely well down here. Some, most crops do. Once you've got your soil to a certain standard, you know, plenty of manure goes into it, gets dug in over the years, you rotivate all your weeds back in, so that all adds, adds humus to the soil. So it, it all helps. Everything you put into the soil does help. 
but you can't defeat clay soil. So if you could introduce yourself to our listeners first. Right. Hello, my name's Ralph, uh, and I'm for the Sheppey Horticultural Society. Yeah, and we're standing on your plot at the moment. Um, you are, yeah. Could you describe it to our listeners? Well, I think you, f- I think you find it's... Uh, it, this one's two plots, OK? I've, at one end, I've got strawberries, yep. OK? That'll be all for me fruit. Uh, we've got first earlies or whatever you want to call them. And then we've got some everberries as well. I've got some commis pears, OK? I've got grapevines at the top. We've got some uh, poor-looking uh, raspberries at the moment, but I'm afraid that they'll be, they'll be sort of like grubbed out and put somewhere else at the moment. Then the other end... Uh, I've got full of beds, which I'm going to put all my vegetables in, but all my root crops. The root crops down here, like parsnips and carrots, they're not too keen for the ground. Uh, The ground on the other plots, uh, that's very, very good for cabbages, uh, beetroot and stuff like that. Um, That's more or less what's everything in this plot, apart from... uh, I also, in my spare, on my spare bits, little small bits, I do lots of courgettes, vegetable spaghetti, um, squashes. Well, they're all squashes, but it's just many different types of squashes. Unfortunately, I don't particularly like them, but what I do is I grow them for my vegetarian friends. Right. And we give them all, well, I give them all away to the lads at work and everything like that. So that's more or less what it is on this plot. Okay, yeah, that's it. Oh, so I do apologise, and I've just started to try and grow uh, sweet potatoes. Okay, uh, I grew. I, I actually, they was quite expensive. I brought them from Thompson and Morgan early part of the year as a root, and they're growing really, really well now. So, hopefully, so they've not been too difficult to grow. They was very slow at first. Right, very slow at first. I thought, what have I spent all my money on? What have I spent all my money on? And but now they're growing very, very vigorous. In in large pots, I've got uh, French beans. Okay, and over on this side, just there, I've got four plants of aubergines, and they're going to be very close to be picking soon. So they're grown in pots because of better soil. Why, why have you done that? Uh, well, to to be fair, it's more they're delicate. Right. They're more delicate, and I've. Um, I'll grow them at home in my greenhouse, bring them out just to get them a bit hardy, but because we're so windy, and it is really, really windy down here, so once the wind's gone and they're a little bit taller, then I'll bring them out. Okay, that's, that's, that's the best thing to do. I'll grow them in pots, a bit of compost, but I only keep the compost for the one year, then we just throw it away. Well, not pull it, I've, I've filled the rest of my beds up with that. So that's what I do with the sort of like the French beans, and the aubergines so hopefully there'll be a success well the aubergines look a success and everything else i'm growing so it's not a problem at the moment well thank you very much for letting us know how things are going that's not a problem so we've been talking to some of the uh, plot holders and um i know you're going to refresh our listeners a little bit about the show that's so not that far away now it isn't it's about two weeks away actually it's on the 29th on the 30th of this month uh, we put it back a week. Last year it was on the 23rd, 24th, if I remember correctly. A year is a long time in allotment hearing, Daniel, as you well know. Yeah. But uh, yes, Saturday the 29th is the uh, opening of the show from 2 p.m. till 6 p.m. And then on the Sunday we will be open from 11 in the morning till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which is exactly the same as we normally do. After that, uh, about 4 o'clock, we will have an auction of the produce which has been on display over the last, uh, over the previous two days. So, yeah, we're looking forward to an, uh, a new show. It'll be, I think it's our 52nd this year, actually. So we've been going for quite some time. So, yep, yeah, all are welcome. There'll be refreshments. Admission is 50p. Uh, that helps pay for the hall. And uh, we look forward to meeting as many people as possible. I, I'm sure as you've been around this morning, there will be... Um, hopefully people saying i wouldn't mind having an allotment myself so people are welcome to come on the sunday when our shops are open obviously on both our sites uh, to either put their name down at richmond street because there is a small waiting list 
a short waiting list at Richmond Street. But here uh, at Medway Road, then uh, Tom Beresford, the manager, the site manager, is always available on a Sunday morning to welcome people uh, to, with a view to actually opening up an allotment. Hopefully, we've got their taste buds going with the, the number and the varieties yeah. of vegetables and uh, fruits that you've been talking about to the people as you've travelled around. So it's delightful to see you. And it's always delightful to, to welcome BRFM. Hopefully it's been a successful visit for yourself. As always, enjoy coming down and uh, always appreciate it. So as always, thank you very much for uh, spending the time with me and introducing me to some of the people here to talk to them. Yes. You, you've probably got some ribald comments as you've gone around afterwards, people jotting in, a couple of shouting. Cause that's tea time, apparently. When you were talking to Ralph, right. it was tea time. Tea's up, come and get it quickly. But uh, apart from that, you, you can hear this very little noise around them no it's a very it, peaceful and a steady sort of pace and people are talking and getting on with their uh, their plots yeah absolutely right you, you won't see everybody it's not like a factory you won't see everybody on the same day but it's nice to meet people you might not see them for a few weeks actually and it's nice to sort of chew the fat after a couple of weeks uh so welcome always welcome and uh, hopefully your visit this morning has been successful Well, Dave, as always, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you at the show. Thank you very much indeed, Daniel.